Welcome to this fourth Sunday of Advent. Our first hymn is 220, Angels from the Realms of Glory. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight o'er all the earth. Ye who sang creation story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Shepherds in the fields abiding, watching for your flocks by night. God with us is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Saints before the altar bending, watching long in hope and fear. Suddenly the Lord descending, in his temple shall appear. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ a newborn King. Let us join together for the affirmation of faith. Let us begin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end amen amen let us join together now for the lord's prayer our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The greatest gift of all Christmases was found in a manger in Bethlehem. The word for Christmas is Jesus, and the word for Christmas is the Word. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father full of grace and truth. In the opening chapter of John, we are told about this Word who is God that became flesh and dwelt among us. Knowing this to be true, I want to ask you this question. Have you ever stopped to think why it was necessary for Jesus to come in the flesh? Why did the God who created the heavens and the earth have to take on human form? I'm going to present to you seven reasons which I believe will help us understand the answer to that question. Jesus came to earth in the flesh to reveal the Father. Jesus said, Righteous Father, 
Though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. One of the most important things that Jesus did was reveal the character of the Father. Among the things he revealed about the Father was his great love and compassion. You should note that before Christ came, the idea of seeing God as a Father was not a very prominent teaching. In the Old Testament times, they understood and related to him as the Almighty, the All-Powerful, and the Holy. God intervened often through angels, and the Lord's manifestation seemed to be for the moment that God wanted to help out or complete some task for his people. And then he would just leave again until his return was warranted for some purpose. When Jesus came, he presented and revealed God as the Father. This was a paradigm shift. By doing this, Jesus introduced God in a way that would reveal how he would be related to us in the faith we would experience in the future, both through Jesus and the Father. He would be our Father, and we would be his children, and God would look over us as a protective Father for his children in this world. Jesus arrival was not a brief revelation. No, Christ walked among humanity for close to 33 years. And in Jesus, we understand that God's presence is always in our lives. God, the caring Father, is with us. In the flesh, He is with us. Jesus came to the earth to be our example. Jesus said, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Jesus came into this world the same way that all of us came into this world, by birth. He was a child. He was a teenager. He grew up to be a young adult. He started a ministry, and his life came to a conclusion in a tragic death on Calvary's cross. But amen, he's done something that we will all do if we believe in him in faith. He did arise from the grave. Uh, he did experience resurrection. All along the way, he was setting an example for us to follow. Uh, he showed us how to pray, how to live, how to even interact with our enemies. I'm still old school and learning about things. If you give me a printed manual, it only introduces stress and anxiety in my life. If I want to learn something, you've got to show me how it works. And Jesus demonstrated everything that we needed to do to live a holy life that pleases our Father in heaven. And I hope that the fad has not worn off with that phrase, what would Jesus do? Because Jesus has shown us everything that we need to do to please the Father. Before you make a major decision or do anything in the world, you need to pause and think, WWJD, what would Jesus do? How does this reflect the character of Christ? And how does this follow the teachings of my Lord Jesus Christ? Jesus came to break the curse. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole. To break the curse of sin, it would require God to step into humanity. It would require Christ to become a curse to redeem us from the curse. Sin had created such a tremendous divide between God the Father and us that He had to come to our side to bring us back to Him. And it took Jesus to show us the way out of condemnation to restore our relationship with the Father. There was a science fiction movie I remember watching as a child called 
Fantastic Voyage. It was released in 1966. These scientists and their submarine were shrunk to microscopic size and they were injected into this human body because there was a terrible blood clot threatening this man's life and regular surgery was too dangerous. It took them going inside of him to save him. So God could not conquer our sin from the outside. It had to be done from the inside, which was the only way that salvation could be brought to humanity. Jesus took on human flesh, became like us to turn us away from sin. Jesus came to earth to fulfill the requirements of the law. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Someone had to fulfill the requirements of the law. You see, the law did not have an expiration date. The law would continue forever. And today, the law is still required of everyone who walks on the face of this earth. It's like being stuck in a room where the water is rising and your death seems imminent as the water rises and rises and rises. There's a hatch above you on the ceiling, but it requires a combination. And as it looks like death is among you, all that are stuck in this room, here comes the one who knows the combination. He opens the hatch and everyone is released to safety. So it is that Jesus Christ came into this world and he knew the combination of redemption and salvation to release us from sin's death so that we could escape. And by fulfilling the requirements of the law, Jesus not only lived up to the standards and completed them, but he also became the required sacrifice that the law demands for eternity, for everyone in the entire world, those of the past, the present, and the future, because nobody in the past, the present, and the future could meet the requirements of the law except for Jesus Christ himself. And so this could only happen if Jesus came to us in flesh. It is sad to see so many in this world that laugh and carry on and say, well, I don't need deliverance from sin. I can just handle all my sin myself without Jesus Christ. And they just laugh and carry on with their lives on the face of this earth. I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, I'm not going to cast the fate of my eternity into the wind of luck. I'm going to put my hand in the hand of Jesus Christ and follow him all the way to the gates of heaven for my eternal place with him forever. Jesus came to earth to shed his blood. Hebrews chapter 9 verses 11 through 14 say, But when Christ came as high priest of the good things that are now already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not made with human hands. That is to say, is not part of this creation. He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place once for all by his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled on those who are ceremonially unclean sanctify them so that they are outwardly clean. How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from the acts that lead to death, so that we may serve the living God? Then Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22 says, In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood, and without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness. One of the greatest reasons it was necessary for Jesus to come in flesh was the shedding of his blood. The law requires that cleansing can only come through the shedding of blood. And Jesus could not shed that blood unless he came to us in flesh. And he met the requirement of the law forever for everyone. There is no longer any blood needed because Jesus won our redemption through his precious blood. 
Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Thank God for the precious blood of Jesus that is still paying for salvation to this very day because there is power in the blood and that power can still redeem any lost soul in this world today. Jesus came to carry our sin and iniquities. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, we are told, He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. According to God's law, there had to be an atonement and that could only come through the shedding of blood. It was the blood of animals through the ages made at the altar. While that was only temporary, there had to be a lasting eternal sacrifice. What would be required greater than the sacrifice than Jesus Christ? Nothing. It's Jesus Christ alone. Christ had to take on human form so that there would be no other way that our sins could be carried away and that we could be given away to heaven other than through Him, Jesus Christ. Jesus came to earth to truly become our high priest and advocate. In Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16, we are told that Jesus is our high priest. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. The final reason to consider is the one that makes Jesus Christ so enduring and approachable in our lives. He understands what we have gone through. The beauty of Christ becoming flesh and taking on human form is now that He can empathize with every one of us. He knows what it means to be loved and rejected, praised and criticized, followed by many, and then left all alone. He knows what it is to be forsaken, yes, even forsaken by God Himself. So in short, he knows what it is to be human because he was human. Because of his humanity, we can feel comfortable and confident in going to Christ for everything that we experience in this world. Isn't it wonderful to know that you can carry to prayer to Jesus Christ exactly what you are experiencing right now. He will meet you where you are and he knows what's going on in your life right now and he can help you. He is there for you. In fact, Jesus came into flesh so that he could be here for you. He completed a course that we could never finish ourselves. With him, he will always finish everything to perfection. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And we will always be sinners. But in Christ, in coming to this earth, we experience His salvation and His mighty presence. Christ was born in Bethlehem so that He could be born into our hearts. O oh, holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the gift of salvation that you brought through Jesus Christ. The Word became flesh. And if we confess with the words of our mouth that Jesus Christ is our Lord and believe in our heart that God has raised Him from the dead, we shall be saved. We are so thankful, Lord, 
for these marvelous reasons that Jesus came to this earth. But friends, rejoice in the reason that he came was to save you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for joining us for our service this week. We hope to see you again next week. God bless. Our closing hymn is Away in a Manger, hymn number 217. We'll sing all three verses.